What is going on, everybody? You got Tone here, back with some more draft league content, bringing you guys the team builder and battle for week one of the PPL Flare Division. Where this week, my team, the Miami Palafins, are taking on none other than Dell or D Double, the coach of the Edmonton Quailers. Be sure to check my man out in the description down below. Really cool guy, really great battler. Content is great. Um, can't enough, can't say enough about this man. He's just great all around. Um, and be sure to check out all the other coaches taking part in the PPL Bolt division as well as the other coaches in the Flare division. So, um, this battle is going up the day after I put my draft analysis out. And this is my week one of Team Builder and Battle for uh, the PPL. Taking on Dell and his Edmonton Coilers. His team should be popping up right about now. And his team is just absolutely insane. He has some some crazy good um, pivots. Uh, the Regenerator Core, Torn T, and the Skelarian Slow King. Clefable. Uh, one of my all-time favorite fairy types to use in draft league format. Great pivots with Rotom, Rotom Wash. Um, offensive threats like Hisuian Zoroark, which is a huge pain for my Annihilate. Otherwise, it would just, like, destroy this team. Not gonna lie. Uh, even Crooked Owl and Toro Padilla Blaze can be a bit of a nuisance. Uh, Crooked Owl a little bit, especially if it's um, Scarf Moxie over Intimidate. I really don't think he would bring Intimidate Crooked Owl against my Annihilate team with an Annihilate and a Defiant Ogre Pond. And even his lower tier Terror Captains, Tatsugiri, which can terrestrialize into either a Dragon, Fairy, or Fire type. And Glalie, which can terrestrialize into either an Ice, Ground, or Ghost type. So, with that out of the way, my game plan heading into this matchup is going to be Hazard Stacking with the emphasis of trying to potentially facilitate a sweep or a late game sweep with my Manaphy. So going into the team, first off you see the Pokemon on your screen. We are bringing our Ogre Pond, which is going to be the Spike Setter for the team. Ivy Cudgel, Knock Off, U-Turn, and Spikes with the Expert Belt. A very straightforward set. It's basically like um, a reworked Meowth Skirata. Uh, Ivy Cudgel is there to basically get damage off on everything, specifically there for the Rotom Wash, which helps out my Manaphy, knock off to get rid of Heavy Duty Boots from stuff like the Galarian Sloking, from the Torn, very helpful just to ensure that the Spikes are doing their damage, U-Turn is nice for momentum, and then of course Spikes to get that chip damage. I uh, kept it simple with a very straightforward max attack, max speed, to at the very least speed tie with Hisui and Zoark. Um, nothing much else to say about that, it's a very straightforward set, Expert Belt is just there to do a bit more damage with um, Ivy Cudgel, do a bit more with knockoff on Hisui and Zoroark, guarantee knock that thing out, as well as Galarian Sloking if it's not like Cobra Berry or something along those lines. So, with the spikes out of the way, next up I needed my rocks, and does not come any better than a Choice Scarf Cleavor, providing me with the ability to get damage and uh, get up my Stealth Rock with Stone Axe. Excisor is nice for being able to chip down not only the Shaman, hit that thing super effectively, I guarantee to a KO, physically defensive Rotom Wash with X Scissor, Sharpness boosted, and Adamant Max Attack. Night Slash is here as a means of hitting the Hisuian Zoroark, and it gives me also a way of hitting the Rever Room, so I can't just come in and resist my Dual Stab, and U-Turn for momentum purposes. This is a very straightforward revenge killing set, is able to deal with the Tornadus. This deals with... Basically anything that's not faster than Cleavor, I went adamant, enough speed to outspeed Tornadus. I don't really care about trying to outspeed, uh, like, timid max speed Tatsugiri, because in order for Tatsugiri to outspeed me, it needs to be the Choice Scarf itself, or I need to get up a Rapid Spin, and considering I'm bringing Annihilate him, trying to get up a, a Spin Off with Tatsugiri, it's going to be pretty difficult to do with, um, in the face of Annihilate, even if he is Terra Fairy. Um, you'll see by my set that it's going to be a little bit more difficult to take down my Annihilate. Then we have the main win con of the hazard stacking um, shenanigans, and that is my Leftovers Take Heart Manaphy with Scald, Ice Beam, Take Heart, and Skill Swap. This is some pretty cool tech. Um, that's been pretty much going around from other like draft leagues, but 
the main purpose of skill swap is it's very beneficial to take advantage of Dell's um, more defensive core or the main thing is I can take Regenerator from Tornadus, I can take Regenerator from Galarian Sloking, take away their recovery, but the other main uh, asset of Skill Swap is to take Unaware from Clefable. So in the sense of a Calm Mind War versus a Take Heart War, um, I can Skill Swap Unaware away from Clefable, give it to my Manaphy, and I would end up winning the 1v1 uh, war if a Calm Mind situation did come up. Um, in that scenario. And other than that, Skull Plus Ice Beam hits everything on my team, on my opponent's team, with the exception being Rotom Wash. But the rest of my team can handle Rotom pretty well, so I'm not really that worried about not being able to run like Energy Ball on this thing because I feel like I deal with Rotom Wash well already. So EV Spread is just a very straightforward max HP, max speed. I opted for max speed. HP just to be able to take hits from stuff like Palsea Taurus Blaze if I like lose the speed tie and it also allows me to guarantee have a way of not being too KO'd by Choice Scarf Crocodile's Earthquake in case he does bring Moxie Choice Scarf which is if he does bring I'm pretty much expecting it to be that sort of set. Then we have my spin blocker for the hazards. We have our Assault Vest Annihilate with Drain Punch, Rage Fist, Night Slash, and U-Turn. This set is just designed to take the special hits from his team. I'm pretty sure I can take like a, <clears throat> a Hurricane from Torn if I need to. But the main thing is with this set is I can guarantee take two unboosted Shadow Balls from Hisui and Zoroark after Stealth Rock. And then 16 speed is enough to guarantee I'll speed a modest max speed Clefable, and the rest is just thrown into attack. This set hits everything on his team, at least neutrally. I did not want to be hard walled by a uh, Hisui and Zoroark. I do have to deal with the mind games though of Hisui and Zoroark because it can disguise itself as like Clefable or Torn or whatever. And I really won't know whether to Rage Fist or Night Slash. So uh, hopefully. Uh, Hasuian Zoroark is dealt with beforehand, so I don't have to really play that 50-50 mind game, uh, which is already a new set that is, because if it wasn't about Hasuian Zoroark, as I mentioned, Annihilate destroys Dell's team, like, just straight up goes in with Drain Punch plus Rage Fist, and that's really all I needed. But in any case, that is my Annihilate. Then we have uh, another real way of dealing with... Uh, taking advantage of the hazards set by Ogre Pond and our Cleavor Choice Specs Gardevoir. You look at Gardevoir, you look at Dell's team, the combination of Gardevoir's dual stab hits everything neutrally. His only real way of dealing with it is to like have a way of dealing with both uh, Moonblast, Psyshock, and Psychic, and the best thing is potentially like of uh, like Fist Death, Assault Fest, Galarian Sloking, and even that is taking like at least 45 from Psyshock. And I'm mostly clicking Psyshock against Galarian Sloking anyway, just because I feel like if there's any Pokemon on his team that would be AV over on his team, that would be Sloking. Um, it could be potentially on the Torn too, but I feel like Torn would just value get a lot more value out of being Boots as opposed to AV um, in this sense. And then the last move I have is Vacuum Wave. This is just here as a means of revenge killing a Choice Scarf Crooked out if it does get out of hand, um, but I do need it to be at around half health to ensure that Vacuum Wave can knock it out. I opted for a bulkier EV spread with my Gardevoir 2 again. This lets me also take hits from the Torn. I can come in, Tracer Generator, and um, I can take any hit from that, um, potentially revenge kill it, and then forcibly s and switch myself out to get back regenerated health if need be. I can Trace Unaware from Clefable 2, so if it has a bunch of Calm Mind boots as it is, I can um, Unaware would ignore those boots and I can just go for Psychic and Psy Shock without any real fear for the most part. So uh, that's the Gardevoir. Nothing much I'll say about that. Just max HP, enough speed from Modest Clef, and the rest are on a special attack. And the other thing to note is Gardevoir, um, he does have two Fairy Resists, the Glarian Slow King and the Reverend Room. The nice thing about both of them, they're both weak to ground. And because I'm running Hashtag with two other Pokemon, this frees up my Ting Lu to be a set like this. So we have Weakness Policy, Ting Lu, 
with Earthquake, Payback, Heavy Slam, Facade. This set does work. Um, especially considering that I'm freed up from not running hazards on this thing. So a set like this is just ridiculously good. So Earthquake hits the Galarian Sloking, hits the Revel Room for good damage. Payback is my surefire way of dealing with the of hitting the Tornadus for the most part. Uh, Heavy Slam is there for spe specifically for Clefable since it can take two Earthquakes if it's physically defensive. And then the fourth move I have is a filler move by opting for Facade just because uh, most of my team, well basically my entire team doesn't appreciate being status, specifically being burnt on my Ogre Pond, on my Cleavor, on my Annihilate from like Wisp, Rotom Wash is very detrimental to those Pokemon and I don't want to go hard into Gardevoir or Manaphy on a potential Will-O-Wisp. So if anything, if I prefer anything to get burnt on this team, I would prefer we want to be Ting Lu, because even then it would still have some utility um, and some hitting power with Facade, especially if I'm able to activate my weakest policy, which is really easy to pop um, against Dell's team because he has multiple ways of, of hitting my Ting Lu super effectively between Torn, U Turn, Clef Moonblast, um, Hydro Pump on the Rotom, so on and so forth. So, if I'm able to um, activate that the weakest policy, this thing does so much work. Especially if I'm able to get hazards up early on in the game. Yeah, this set can, like, destroy his team as opposed to just, like, um, chip away at stuff for Manaphy. So, yeah, all of this is facilitating a potential late-game Manaphy sweep. And this Ting Lu set facilitates that really, really well in conjunction with my spec start of war. So, yeah, the team's really coming together really, really well here. Uh, EV spread is um, 124 speed investments as a guarantee outspeed uninvested Clefable. Um, 180 attack investment with an adamant nature lets me guarantee 2 a KO. Uh, fifthly defensive Clefable with heavy slam, guaranteed, even if it's unaware. And if my weakest policy is activated, um, plus 2 payback will always knock out a max HP Tornadus guaranteed. It has 100 minimum. If he does stay in, act my weakest policy like Grass Knot or something, I kill it back with Payback. So, yeah, that set, this set does work. So, that out of the way, that's the team builder for this, for week one of the PPL. Hope you guys enjoyed. Again, be sure to check out my opponent, Dell. Really cool dude. Really, really, really solid battler. Um, and really, really enjoy his content as well. And with that out of the way, I kept you guys up long enough. Let's head on over to the battle. Alright guys, so here we are with our PPL Bolt and Flare Division Week 1 battle taking on Dell and his Edmonton Coilers and this is nowhere close to what I was expecting to see. Um, not gonna lie, he did... He brought the Glalie, okay. He did not bring Crocodile. Alright, so... Alright, so I'm gonna have to take some notes here. He brought Glalie. So there's Glalie, um, Pursuing Zoroark, Clefable, Tornadus, uh, Tauros, and the Galarian Slowking. So he didn't bring Crooked Owl, which means that, uh, Spec Scardivore does so much work in this game, my god. Um, he didn't bring Rotom either. Alright, so that's another thing to take into consideration as well. Let's just, uh, I'm still going to do the same thing as before. Um, not the same thing as before, but, um, I'm still just going to try to lead off with my, uh, Cleavor. Then just try to get all the hazards. He didn't bring Tatsu Gary either. Um, I don't think he, no, he, he brought his, he brought Glalie. Glalie is one of his terror ones. Um, it's Glalie and Tatsu Gary. Alright, so, yeah, let's just lock this in. Lead off with Cleavor. Um, if he leads off with the, uh, Glalie, um, I'm assuming he brought Glalie specifically just for the spikes and everything, but, uh, yeah. Uh, this is gonna be an interesting one. Good luck, have fun to, uh, Dell, and, uh, hopefully we can start the season off with a W here. So, um, so he does lead off with Glalie, I'm assuming that's the Glalie, um, there's no guarantee of that. Um, so, yeah. Um, the HP bar is a little bit off, but that's okay. Um, so, 
I am Scarf. I expect this thing to be like Focus Sash or whatever. Um, but um, regardless, I think my play is as much as I want to Stone Axe immediately. Um, I think my safest play just to like account for. Hmm, if I account for Zora, Shadow Ball shouldn't kill me. So I'm just going to U turn to break potential Focus Sash. Because I still don't know whether or not this is the Zoroark or the Glalie. Alternatively, I could just let off with my Gardevoir, because I would have lived any one hit from the Glalie. Okay, so now I know for sure it's the Glalie, so that's good information. So let's see, what's he going to Terrasalize to? Is he going to be Terra Ground? It is Terra Ground, so yeah, it's a good thing I clicked U-Turn. So yeah, Terra Ground just to resist the Stone Axe. Makes sense. Um, but I am just going to U-Turn here. Do about almost half. Hmm. And for my follow up, hmm, this is a tough one. I imagine he goes directly for spikes, but I don't want to go directly into Ogre Pond. As much as, as detrimental as that would be, I think he would just get up a layer of spikes. I think my safest play would probably be going into Gardevoir. Alternatively, I could go Manaphy, but I don't want to, like, I don't want to risk the win con so early on in the game. So, let's just go Gardevoir. It would suck if he's, like, Destiny Bond or whatever, because I'm not max speed on this thing. So, yeah, Trace Center Focus doesn't matter. I imagine he's just going to get up a layer of spikes here. Yeah. Makes sense, because I, I didn't bring um, Hazard Removal. Now we see he's leftovers. Okay, so that explains why it did so little. So this is a bulky, um, this is a bulky setup lately. Okay, I can respect that. Um, so with that being said, I think for the most part what I can do here is I can go for Psy Shock. I think the only like downplay, the only bad play about this is if he's like Destiny Bond. Um, I'm hoping he's not actually. Because, like, Specs Gardevoir does so much work in this game. Especially considering he did not bring Tornadoes. He is going to He's going to switch, though. So what's taking the Choice Specs Psy Shop? It is going to be the Slow King. Let's see if you are, um, a Solvest or whatever. Okay, that looks like... Hmm, it's not a 2 KO. That did about a little bit under half. So he does have some defensive investment. Um, either way, I will make the play out into my... Hmm, I don't want to go Tanglu right now. I could just go into Annihilate. Yeah, let's just let's go Annihilate here. I imagine the switch is going to be the... Um, I imagine the switch is just going to be the dog on... Um, that's no switch him. Um, I think he's just going to um, Chili Reception here. So, do we see the chili reception or do we have to go for something? Take the spikes. He is going to Sludge Bomb here. So that's going to boost my Rage Fist. Um, and since he has, he doesn't have a, his Dark Resist is Clefable. Um, and there's no way in hell he should let me, he should let this thing go down. Um, so I think the, the safest play I could Rage Fist into Night Slash, I feel. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's Rage Fist. Alright, so that's, Okay, so he... I didn't want to overpredict there, but uh, yeah. Perfect. So Sloking is down. I will gladly take that. So... Um, now he doesn't have a Moon Blast resist anymore, so that's fantastic. Annihilate. Chaos. Galarian. Slow King. Perfect. Um, in comes the Tauros. He is going to intimidate me. I am defiant, but mm, he wouldn't bring this out unless he's like Will O Wisp. Oh, he's mi <laughs> he's Mirror Herb. Okay, then. So he. Okay, that's. Hmm. 
All right, here's another question. Does Flare Blitz knock me out? Um, Kalis is pretty good into his team now with him not having a, um, with him not having Slow King around. There's still a Zora to deal with. Hmm. I think the safest bet is, man, I really just want to stay in though. I really do. Uh, like, I could also just drain punch, if anything. So yeah, I'll drain, as much as I don't want to do this. He's just gonna flame charge though. I'm okay with that. And we crit him. Oh god, I crit. Bro, that is so huge. Oh god, I am so sorry, man. That was so big that I got that crit there. Cause I definitely didn't kill. I definitely didn't kill with um with Drain Punch. Shoot. Oh man, that that is brutal. I think now he's forced to go out into either Torn or Zorg. I also think I knew what he was trying to do. Yeah, Clef's gonna come out. But I don't know if this is Clef or Zorg is the other thing though. I think the saddest thing is, if he still had the mirror herb, if he kept the, the Tauros in the back and, and knew what my my Ting Lu set was, he would have been so annoyed. <laughs> um but here's the other thing though. I want a night slash. Because Moonblast doesn't kill me in one hit. Moonblast doesn't kill me because I'm a Salt Fest. But at the same time, though, man, oh man, oh man, it's tough. It's really tough because I want to, I want to Rage Fist, but I don't want to get nothing out of the turn. Hmm. Like this is still good for Zorark, I guess. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna take one. I'll take. I'll take one chance. Yes. Okay. Okay. Please do not kill me. Yes. Okay. Perfect. 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 I clicked. I clicked night slash. I clicked night slash. <laughs> hey, let's go. I clicked night slash. <laughs> Down goes the Zorak. Let's annihilate putting in work. Oh my god, I'm so glad I made that play. I'm so glad I clicked Night Slash. <laughs> god. Yo, this 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 game. Okay, yeah, he's forced to go torn. He's forced to go into torn now. Oh my god. This annihilate is putting in. I'm I'm definitely keeping this. Cause whenever he goes in clef, I've taken enough. Um. I've gotten hit how many times now? Three? Yeah, I've been hit three times. That's a hundred and that's a hundred and um, hundred and fifty. Yeah, I, I have to like hundred. No, it's two hundred. I think it's two hundred. But in any case, I'm gonna go out into my. Uh, hmm. Do I wanna go Tinglu? Yeah, let's go Tinglu. Let's do it. I'm gonna do it. Wow, this game is going so well for me. Like, I'm I've gotten fortunate enough with the um with the the Tauros crit and getting the prediction right with the Zorg. So yeah, take the spikes. Um, vessel of ruin. Easy on a bleak windstorm. That's fine. I eat that up. Lowers my speed, which is unfortunate. Um, and from here, hmm, I kind of want to go for payback. Yeah, let's go for payback. Because Clef still can't kill me. <laughs> U-turn, activate my weakness policy. And, um, yeah. As, if the Clef is... If the Clef is Life Orb, then it will kill me. I kind of wish he didn't have Bleak Wind Storm, but it's fine. I'm totally okay with that. He went Glalie. I mean, this is gonna die. I went for payback. Oh, it did not die. 
that's actually interesting that you did not that plus two payback did not kill. Um, hmm. I don't want to waste the weakness policy. I already activated it. So, if you want to ice beam me or destiny bond, whatever, go for it. No, he just gets some layers. It's more layers of spikes. Okay. But so Tinglu's gonna pick up a kill here. So Tinglu KOs. That's fine. All right. So all he has left now is Torn and Clef. Hmm. I thought he would go Clef first, but if he didn't go Clef, maybe he's not Magic Guard? I mean, maybe he's not unaware. But he's gonna go Clef now, yeah. Like, he kinda has to, right? <laughs> and I get to see if he's, um, if he's unaware of Magic Guard, so I'm gonna Heavy Slam. Regardless if he's unaware, there's still two of KOs. Regardless of whether he's a Magic Guard or not, um, unaware or not, there's still two of KOs, always. The only problem is he's faster than me because of Bleak Wind Storm rolling on my speed. So yeah, yeah, Annihilate did so much work. Like, like I, I'm not gonna lie, I I got so fortunate with the beginning there. He is gonna call mine though. I'm okay with that, which means he is unaware. He wouldn't go for call mine there unless he wasn't unaware. But either way, I do two a KO. Yeah, that's unaware. And he has to kill me. So, I go for Heavy Slam. Actually, I don't even think... Okay, it did kill me. Okay. So, Tinglu goes down. So, Tinglu dies to Clef. I'm okay with that. I now go... I go Gardevoir now. I go Gardevoir and I click Psyshock. Because I, because like I take the spikes damage, yes, but I do trace the um, unaware, so his boosts are negated. Yep, boost negated. I click the good old Psy Shock, and uh, this should hopefully to a KO. I mean, I probably should have moon blasted there, but but I still killed. Yeah. So Clef is down, and all he has left is the Torn. So yeah, really, really unfortunate beginning for Dell, man. I, 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 I'm not gonna stress it. Like I got really, really fortunate this game. Um, and we just side shock again. I don't kill from full, but yeah, bleak wind storm. Yeah, that's it's a two a KO, but it's okay. Side shock again. Yeah, that's almost that's at almost kills. And. Um, uh, let's just, uh, go for side shot again. I'm not, I'm not gonna do anything stupid here, just... Ah, uh, tried to get the differential down, but Gardevoir had other ideas. So, yeah, that's gonna be the game, guys. We are gonna pick up a 5 w over Dell and the Edmonton Coilers in a very unfortunate hacksy game. I'm not gonna lie, this game went significantly in my favor. Like ever since, like when the when the when the Tauros got crit, like he had a great idea with the uh, mirror herb, um, with mirror herb Tauros. But him miss him not me getting the crit on the Tauros was so huge, because he definitely didn't he definitely didn't um die to drain punch. Like there was no way in hell he was dying to drain punch there, and um, yeah from from then. Things just kept snowballing out of control, and then me getting the me calling the Zoroark disguise as Clefable going for Night Slash. Like I lost no, I felt like I lost nothing that turn because even if he attacked me, I lived any one hit. And if he went back into Zoroark, who cared? At least I, then I would know what is what. But me calling the um, Zoroark disguise as Clefable was also pretty big because that meant I didn't have to deal with it later on in the match. So uh, yeah, unfortunate start for the season for Dell, but we pick up a 5-0-W to start the season. Annihilate did work, uh, Gardevoir went in, and Tinglu put in some pressure. Um, uh, there's not so much I'll say about this game, man. It's just unfortunate the way that things happen, man. But um, yeah, I know if anything, Dell's gonna bounce back for sure. GG as always to my opponents. Uh, be sure to check out Dell in the description down below. Check him out, all that good stuff. Um, show him some love. Be sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff for more draft league content. And that's gonna be for me, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the battle, nonetheless. And until the next time, this is Tone signing off for now.
Peace out.